is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. Get that. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. All righty. Um, so before we start, my name is Dr. Akash Lohia. I'm a PGY4 at Sunrise Health. Um, I'm joined by some of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Farrington, who's a PGY3. Um, he'll be doing the se second half of this presentation. And then our chief residents, Dr. Carol Elsakar and Dr. Jonathan Holter, are also here. Um, and they'll kind of be answering any questions that anybody may have at the end of this presentation. So um, I think we'll kind of get started here um, with the presentation. So this is just kind of a presentation that we threw together to kind of uh, highlight some of the best things about our program and kind of give you guys an overview of what Sunrise Health is all about. So um, starting off with kind of uh, who we are as an institution. So we are part of the HCA Healthcare Network, um, which is one of the largest hospital systems in the country um, and one of the largest uh, healthcare institutions that has GME program. Um, HCA as an institution nationwide has over 5,000 residents and fellows, um, over 300 residency programs. Um, there, we have about 186 hospitals in 20 states, which is accounts for about 5% of healthcare in the United States. So a pretty large portion of the healthcare. Um, we are also associated with the VA, the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, there are 170 VA centers in the US. Um, the VA in Nevada was organized in 1972. We now have over 240,000 veterans who live in, this, um, in the state of Nevada and Southern Nevada. Um, and basically our goal with working at the VA is to provide ex exceptional health care uh, to kind of improve the health and well-being of the veterans who live in our state. Now, Mountain View Hospital, um, that is primarily where most of our training occurs, it is a 425-bed acute care center, and we are currently in the process of an expansion that should add about 60 beds um, later this year. Our rehab unit, we have an acute uh, care rehab unit um, that has 54 rehab beds at Mountain View. That's primarily where a lot of our inpatient um, acute care training occurs. Uh, we also do have an outpatient rehab clinic at Mountain View Hospital, um, primarily where uh, you spend your PGY three and four years with our program director and assistant program director in the um, general PMNR clinic. And then our GME building is also associated with Mountain View Hospital. With the VA, um, we spend a decent amount of time at the VA as well, primarily our PGY three year as well as PGY four year. Um, we have a comprehensive general outpatient PMNR clinic um, with many uh, physicians, as well as a multidisciplinary pain medicine um, portion as well. And so we do a lot of our pain rotations at the VA. And then finally, Sunrise Hospital. Um, it's definitely the biggest out of the hospitals that we go to. Um, it's almost 700 bed acute care unit with uh, 42 rehab beds. So the inpatient rehab unit is about 42 beds. We spend our PGY two year um, over there, a couple of months there working on the inpatient unit. Um, we do also do our inpatient pediatric rotation there as well um, with the Sunrise Children's Hospital. And we have about four pediatric rehab beds um, associated with that. In terms of uh, goals as an institution that we have, so with HCA, um, kind of the goals that we have is kind of to respect the unique worth of each individual 
we try and treat each patient with compassion, kindness. We work together with our colleagues um, and we work very closely with a lot of the other specialties. Um, and then with the department of the VA, um, you know, we're kind of fulfilling Lincoln's promise to kind of care for the veterans of our country who have served, you know, and honored this country. And so we try and give the utmost respect and care um, to uh, our VA patients. Now, um, our residency as a program, um, we do have a few affiliations. So we are affiliated with UNLV. Um, so they do send a lot of their medical students to do elective rotations with us through our program. We also do have an agreement with Toro University in Nevada, um, who also send a lot of their students as well to rotate with us. And um, we actually have um, a good amount of our residents from their program. Um, we also do have an agreement with them to use their cadaver lab every year um, as part of our didactics. Every year we go to Turo um, for about three sessions to kind of go through our MSK anatomy in the cadavers or on the cadavers that they use, which is a pretty unique and um, opportunity that I think we have um, that kind of allows us to go through the MSK and the anatomy um, through the cadavers. And so kind of the mission that we have for our program is to provide kind of a comprehensive PMNR service to the population in the Las Vegas community and to provide kind of hands-on education um, and building a multicultural academic environment. And finally, kind of to train physicians in a future in PMNR to become kind of regional and national experts in the field. So kind of what's unique about us, what sets us out from, or what sets us apart from other programs. So we are the only PMNR program in the state of Nevada. Um, we're the first actual PMNR residency program within HCA GME. Um, I think, you know, there's been one or two that have opened up since we've been open, but we're the first one um, within HCA. Um, we have pretty devoted faculty in all areas, so academic, private, and public healthcare settings. So you get a very diverse education um, while you're here. We do place a pretty big emphasis on hands-on learning. So we do have a simulation center um, that we do use pretty frequently. Um, the simulation center, we have, over, uh, we have six plus ultrasounds that we can dedicate for educational use um, that we use for practice. Um, we also have high fidelity mannequins, and we oftentimes run simulations um, based on patient management. This happens usually during didactics, so um, we'll have scenarios like an acute stroke or um, TBI patient, something or a complication with TBI patient, something like that. And we'll just run through scenarios, kind of prepare our residents for inpatient care. And then we do also have a joint and spine injection model that's good to kind of practice injections on both blind and ultrasound guided. Um, the other thing we have is a motion analysis gate lab um, that's associated with our outpatient clinic. So we have a couple of different research projects um, that are currently in the works. And one of our chiefs, Dr. Holt is actually um, in charge or one of the people in charge of this. And so there are a couple of different um, research projects that are currently in the works that is utilizing the motion analysis. And I think that's very unique and kind of um, something that we have available uh, if residents want to get involved in that. Um, we do have a lot of support for resident well-being and then um, a lot of resources and opportunities for research and procedural skills development. And then finally, um, fellowships in the future. So the pain medicine fellowship, we actually have accomplished that. So I'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about that later, but we did start our pain medicine fellowship. It opened this year. So our inaugural class just started this month, which is very exciting for us. Um, and then our program director, Dr. Lee has mentioned that he would like to open a sports medicine fellowship. And hopefully in the next few years, that might be a possibility, um, something that would get opened. Um, so this is just a list of kind of our core faculty that we have available. Um, there's a few kind of noteworthy people. Um, Dr. Dottie, she's kind of our one um, on the chair and part of the wellness committee. 
she does kind of the inpatient um, acute care rehab medicine at Mountain View Hospital, and she's, you know, a real advocate for us residents, you know, great resource, um, kind of as Sunrise Hospital, Dr. Poole um, is one of the, he's a recent grad from UC Irvine, and he's kind of the, um, who we rotate with over there at Sunrise Hospital is a great resource, um, especially as he is younger, and so uh, he's a great resource when it comes to just talking about job opportunities and kind of looking for a job once you finish residency. Um, with our GME program, so Dr. Lee is our program director, and Dr. Warner are, uh, is our associate program director, and they kind of run the outpatient clinic um, at Mountain View Hospital, and both are incredibly intelligent and fantastic resources to have. Um, at the VA, Dr. Mack is the interim site director for now. Um, he's also a recent graduate, and you know he's also a great resource, especially for MSK knowledge, um, ultrasound knowledge. Um, and then Dr. Salas is the chief of the pain service um, at Mountain View and um, is, I believe, uh, the head of the uh, pain fellowship at the, um, of our Mountain View program. So he would be a good resource if anybody is interested in pain management in the future. Um, these are just our current residents. Um, so our PGY-4 class, um, this is kind of us. Um, the first three, Dr. Tool, Dr. Park, and Dr. Rodriguez, um, they um, were in the uh, previous PGY-4 class, but they are they have uh, one or two months left each that they are finishing. Um, but we have six residents per class. And so these are kind of uh, who we have currently. We're all a relatively diverse group of people. <laughs> And then this is our rotation schedule. So kind of the one of the most important parts of our program. Um, we do we have 13 modules every year. Um, each module is four weeks long, so about one month long. You rotate through different services. Um, so divided up into PGY2, 3, and 4 years. So PGY2 um, is, I think, very typical of most programs where we front load a lot of the inpatient um, rehab work. So PGY2s will do about 11 months of inpatient. Um, this will be divided between Mountain View Hospital and Sunrise Hospital. And then they'll do two months of outpatient. This will be at the VA. Um, PGY-3, that's kind of when I say the program really opens up and, in my opinion, is the best year of our program. Um, but, you know, the inpatient time significantly reduces. So we're you're down to about two months of inpatient, and that's doing pain medicine consults. And then the rest of the time is outpatient medicine, which is split into things like EMG, pain, pain management, pediatrics. Um, PGY-3 is also when we get our selective and elective rotations. So um, this is kind of the electives are opportunities to, if you're interested in a fellowship, to set up a rotation at an outside facility if you want to, um, or you can set it up here in Vegas, kind of it's very much up to you. And then um, selectives are um, rotations that are you know, offered within our HCA program, um, but it just kind of gives you the opportunity. If you want more sports medicine exposure, you can set up a sports medicine rotation. If you want an EMG rotation, you can do more EMG. So you get that kind of freedom to do that. And then PGY four year, um, that's still very outpatient heavy. Um, we get, you know, 11 months of outpatient, um, as well as a little bit of elective and selective time. Um, but I think it's very typical of most programs where PGY three and four year are going to be um, your outpatient heavy years, and then PGY two is inpatient heavy. And looking at the kind of core educational activity that we have, so um, beginning of residency when you're PGY two, um, we do one week of orientations. So our current PGY twos just finished their orientation week where they kind of get acclimated to, you know, Mountain View Hospital, Sunrise Hospital, all the different facilities, kind of how they'll be taking care of patients, EMR, all of that. Um, in terms of our didactics, we have didactics every Wednesday um, with all residents from 1 to 5 p.m. Um, this is, uh, didactics are usually a variety of different things. So 
we'll have uh, guest lecturers come and speak about you know their area of expertise. Um, we'll go usually module by module. So we'll start with something like stroke, then move on to TBI the next month, then spinal cord the next month, and so. Um, we kind of have our didactic split up by modules kind of based off of Cucurillo, which is our board review book. Um, so we get a good amount of uh, training and education in each area. Um, the didactics also include uh, going down to stimulation center training, getting hands-on practice. Um, we'll have representatives from like Allergan come, come to us um, with mannequins to practice like Botox injections. Um, so a lot of hands-on stuff that we get to do. Um, we'll go through question banks like AAPMR, board vitals, previous uh, SAE questions, um, just for education. And then we have the anatomy review, like I mentioned earlier, about three to four times a year at Turo University, um, which is a really cool and unique opportunity. You have five um, minutes remaining. Okay. Uh, all righty. I'm going to then speed through this. We also have journal clubs, grand rounds presentations, and kind of workshops based on the needs of the residents. Um, in terms of educational goals and scholarly activity, um, we have a lot of research going on. Um, Dr. Lee is huge on research. Um, we have a huge database of uh, research opportunities with HCA and the data, um, there's a huge database that we can utilize. And so that allows us to get involved in a lot of research opportunities. Um, and so a lot of us have been part of uh, research. Um, you can see here, this is our scholarly activity from 2021. We have a lot of people kind of involved in research and we have some ongoing research and preparation. So a lot of opportunity for research. Um, we also get a lot of educational resources, so we get stipend for attending AAPMR and AAP. Um, we get board review stipend. We get access to question banks such as AAPMR and Board Vitals. Um, we get a lot of orientation materials like PM&R books, ebooks. We have a SharePoint that has a lot of our uh, resources, and then in terms of progress, we maintain BLS ACLS certification. We have our SAE, which is our in-training examination every January, and EMG self-assessment tests in May. And then everybody is res uh, responsible to do a QI project um, by the time they graduate. And then we have grand rounds presentations every um, PGY3 and PGY4 year. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna, and then in terms of our future goals, um, we did start a pain management fellowship this year. We're currently building a comprehensive outpatient PM&R clinic, um, and we are heavily involved in a lot of research and doing a lot of community outreach stuff. So we do a lot of sideline coverage, Special Olympics stuff, um, and VA activities. And so I'm going to hand this over to Dr. Farrington, then take you a long time, but he's going to talk about the resident well-being uh, at our program. All right. Do you want to just go through the slides? Or... Can you all see the presentation? Yes. Okay. Get through this. So I'm Dr. Farrington. Um, I'm PGY3 here. I moved here from Mississippi. I uh, moved out to Vegas to start PM&R residency. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So we're a little lax on time, so I'm just going to go through this quickly. So we have orientation. We prioritize a work-life balance here. Uh, so during your entire residency, including PGY2, you do not work weekends and you do not work nights. It's Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. You know, we like to work really hard during the week, make sure we get a good education, but we also want to be able to enjoy our time outside of residency. So they really push for that. Um, various, I'm part of, um, partly in charge of the wellness committee. And uh, so we've been doing a lot of different events with that. Um, Dr. Dottie leads it. We have a bunch of mentorship, but I want to go ahead and get into some of the fun things that we do here. So when you first come here, we always do a welcome meeting with the um, new PGY2s coming in. Uh, last, this past year, we went to get Korean barbecue just to introduce everybody and get everybody a, a good welcome dinner and welcome to the program. And we also get uh, together for more informal events throughout the year, uh, including a Labor Day barbecue, which we did pat this past year, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we also have a Friendsgiving. Uh, the head of our wellness committee, he's a big opponent of his pizza oven, so he had everybody over to come and uh, treat us to that. 
And we also do dinners along with all of our co-residents, along with our faculty, uh, to be able to get to know them outside of work, um, which is also something that we're planning on doing at least twice a year. And then finally, we planned a big overnight trip for our entire residency, paid for by HCA, so this was all paid for by the hospital, uh, to take a ski trip over to Bryan Head, Utah. We stayed for the entire weekend. Um, it was a lot of fun. I just went skiing, enjoyed it, just company. And we also did more informal events, like we went to a paint party, um, just had some drinks, did some painting, got to know each other outside of work, and we got free food. And a lot of these wellness events are paid by the hospital, uh, so it is no upfront cost to us. We also did get a lot of sports coverage here. Vegas is a huge place for sports, so we were actually uh, part of the team physicians for the women's Final Four this past year. You can see our chief resident on the left uh, really enjoying himself. And then the Wellness Committee, I'm also in charge of graduation. We just put that event on. It was a very nice send off for our uh, current graduating residents. Uh, big thing, this is me hiking at Red Rocks with my dog. Uh, no nights, no weekends. Just wanted to emphasize that again. We have a very good work-life balance. I think we're the only residency program in the country that might always have golden weekends and never work nights. So just I'm planning some other events. Vegas has a lot of exhibits, top golf, bodies, always arts and shows. We're planning some future events, either going to San Diego, camping in Zion, or repeating a ski trip to Brian Head. And just as Las Vegas, we have, you know, the Strip. We have massive music festivals, some of the best shows that you could have in the country, uh, some of the best restaurants you can have in the country. So Vegas is definitely a place that you would be able to enjoy uh, your free time, which we have a lot of while you're in your training program. We also have the Raiders here. We have the Golden Knights, who just won a uh, Stanley Cup this past year. Uh, this skiing in the top right is 30 minutes away from Vegas at Mount Charleston. And we also have Lake Mead, if you're like me, who enjoys being on a boat. Uh, it's also 30 minutes away from Las Vegas. And then most of us live around Summerlin, which is a very, it's a suburb of Las Vegas, very nice and upscale, lots of golf courses, shopping. There's a minor league baseball team um, here also, and lots of beautiful nature um, to be able to go look at and enjoy. So that's it for us. If anybody has any questions, I don't know what, how we're doing on time. You guys have time for some questions. We're waiting um, for UCLA to log in still. Okay, sounds great. All right, does anybody have any questions for us? Looks like there's one in the chat. Do you accept IMG? Yes, we do. So our chief is on if she wants to chime in and talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I, yeah, that, my understanding is that we do accept IMG. Um, um, if if you have further specific questions, like regarding, uh, you know, uh, if there might be any issues or problems for a specific situation, we can. Uh, that's like a case by case basis. But in general, we do accept IMG. Yeah. I, I'm Carol Oscar, by the way. I'm one, uh, one of the chief residents um, at this program. So. All right. Uh, any, any other cool. And do we have any other questions uh, for HCA Sunrise? All right. Thank you all so much for your time. Um, next on our schedule is Opti. Do we have? Oh, any graduation date or USMLE cutoff? Um, HCA Sunrise. Sure. So for graduation date. Um, uh, it, it varies year to year. Um, it's usually, it's, it's always taken place in June. Um, but we, it's, uh, but we, in terms of the specific day, we talk with, for the ceremony, at least we talk with, um, you know, the, the people who are graduating and the rest of the class, because we want as much participation as possible to just to show that support. Um, and we just pick a good date based on what works for everybody. So this year it was June 17th. That was the best date for everybody um, to oh, attend. Did she mean the graduation from medical school? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that makes more sense. Um, I mean, any graduation date or you? I mean, 
I think if you if you just apply via match, um, I, I you know I don't know off the top of my head to be honest, but I think if you just apply via the match, um, you know, and uh, and come to the interviews, you know, we. You know, we're, we're looking as, at you as a whole candidate, um, like you're talking about USMLE score cutoffs and things like that. You know, obviously we want, you know, competitive um, person, but we also look at the applicant as a whole. Um, and we just see if, you, if there's a passion there for PMNR and, um, you know, you as a whole, you know, via your CV and what you've done in medical school and your interests, if you can just show that you are hardworking and you care about this field, um, and you want to better our program and um, our reputation uh, by what you do, uh, you know, then we'll, we'll consider you seriously um, in our program. Um, let's see. Um, that's a good, uh, the second question for a step two required is come flex a load uh, acceptable. So I'm MD, so um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but, um, I think Cole and them, they only took Comlex, so I don't think it requires for step two. Um, it definitely goes into your application, uh, whether you complete step two versus only Comlex two. But I do know some people in our program only completed the Comlex. Okay, so there you go. I'm a DO, and um, I did take both, but I do believe um, there are a lot of people, or a couple of people in our program who just took Comlex two, and they were fine, so we should be okay. We are very DO friendly overall. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of the uh, of my colleagues are DO, so.